In this video, we're gonna talk about how we can create our own customized play clip at point inside of Unity's audio system because the default one is very limited. We don't have access to the, audio, the 3D audio in the scene once it's created. And also, what if we want to adjust the radius of the audio, right, the attenuation? We don't get control of that. So I may wanna say, play this clip, play it at this position, play it at this volume, but maybe I, want it, maybe I want to hear it from very far away, which we can't really do or have any control at the moment. So we're gonna create our own, and I'm gonna build off the uh, previous audio helper class we created before with the Play Clip 2D tutorial. So you can, this is what the code looks like for this new script we wrote. Keep in mind, don't, do not inherit from mono behavior and also make sure that this is a static class and this is gonna be a static function because you wanna be able to call this from anywhere. Ideally, and you can ignore this code too, I'm just gonna delete that out. So firstly, we, we do have a coin sound that we've been using for testing. So if you don't already have an audio, an audio clip to play, just you can find one for testing, doesn't really matter which. So I'm gonna say if input dot get key down key code dot uh, q just for testing, then we want to be able to play the sound 2D. So let's leave a little placeholder here, and this is gonna be really similar to the audio source dot play clip at point, right? Um, so this is very similar to the syntax we want. We want to be able to call this from, from anywhere very easily without a reference to a specific thing because we're going to spawn it in the scene. So I'm going to move through this pretty quick since we covered a lot of this inside of the 2D version. But really what I want is I want a static audio source. Call this play clip 3D. And the reason this isn't void is because we want to return this so that maybe the if we wanted to make other changes to the audio source, we have the option to do that. So just like below, I'm actually going to copy paste this right here. But you could type it out if you want. We are creating a new audio object, and I'm going to call this 3D right here, 3D audio. We're going to spawn it a game object in the scene. We're going to attach an audio source component to that and then hold on to it with, with this little reference right here. And now we're gonna configure it. So first thing we need to do is configure it to be 3D. So what do we need? We need our audio clip clip. We need our volume. And because this is a 3D sound, we also need a position to play it in. So if you are playing it where a particular object is, you would just say that object's dot position and you'd pass that in. And we mentioned that we may want to affect the attenuation. So for example, maybe we want um, float min distance and float max distance. And you'll see this is starting to become a lot of parameters, which is the reason why we want to return this just in case you want to do other things, we don't want to require them to pass in everything. I'm going to leave these in here for now just to show you that you can do it. But if you would rather just take them out and then do it anytime you need it, like you could do the code here. I'm just saving myself some repeatable code. So we have our volume. Let's also do our 3D things. So let's say 3D settings. And first thing we need to do is our audio object that position, we wanna move our game object, which will be our new, you know, this would be the equivalent of making a new object, attaching an audio source. Now we wanna move this thing that we're creating to the object's position that we passed in. So we just snap it to the, to the position that's passed in. To do that through code, and I just deleted that thing that I just made because we're spawning it at runtime. Do that through code, it would be audio object dot transform Right, our game object dot transform dot position is equal to the position we passed in up here at the top. Now, because our audio source defaults to 2D, let's think about this. If we create a new game object, we add an audio source to it, you'll see it defaults to 2D right here. We need to turn the spatial blend to be 3D, first of all. So to do that, it's just a spatial blend property right here. So we're gonna say audio source dot spatial blend is equal to one. 
And then once we do that, then we have access to the min and max distance. So we'll say set attenuation. I'm being, super, I'm being superfluous with my comments here. You don't really need them, but it's helpful for separating out blocks of logic and for explaining the example. So now we're gonna do audio source dot min distance, which is something we can access inside of our audio source component. And we're just setting this all through code. You could normally do this inside of the inspector, but because we're spawning this, we need to do this through code. We're also setting in the max distance, which again, both of these we are passing in. And lastly, we want to make sure that we play this audio source as well. And we destroy it when we're done. So we're just going to call generically object.destroy. Give it our game object, which is the audio object we created at the top. And how long until we destroy it? We want to delay it by the length of the clip. And the last thing we want to do is because we are returning an audio source with our function, we want to make sure that we return our audio source component that we created and added. So audio source. Now there's one last thing here that I'm going to put in. So now I need to play my 3D sound. Audio helper dot play clip 3D, the new one that we created. And we can see here what it needs. And already there's a lot of parameters here. You could create a custom class that compartmentalizes that, but I think that would be too much. You could just take out the min distance and max distance if you just want the position and you could set that down here. But keep in mind, you'd have to do that every single time uh, if you wanted variability there. So I'd like to put it inside the function. So now what clip do I wanna play? Well, the coin sound up here. How loud do I want to play it? Where do I want to play it? And in this case, we could play it from the level, level controller's position. But if you wanted to put this on another object, so if we created a coin object we, and we put this script on the coin object, right? If this was a coin, we would create the coin script and uh, look for the clip there. And then we played it from there. Then we're just getting the object that the script is attached to's position. Just keep in mind that calling this right here, is playing it from the level controller's position, which who knows where that is. I'm just gonna put that zero, 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 just to be clean. But if you wanna get a, any other position in your scene, get that however you need to, and then pass it in right here. And then lastly, I wanna show you something. Let's give a default of zero to 500. Um, this is actually pretty huge, uh, but this is the default. You could give it 50. It doesn't really matter now that we have control over it. It's our min distance and our max distance. But I've noticed really weird things if you put in a min distance of zero. So I do recommend you put in one here, but what if the designer doesn't really know that, right? So we'll put in one, but I'm gonna add one more thing to my helper function to make sure that no one can ever put in zero or let's say a negative number, that would be really bad. Right before we set our min distance right here, I'm going to enforce that the min distance that's getting passed in here is definitely one or above. So I'm going to say min distance is equal to, and a handy little function here, mathf.clamp. If I give it the value that I want to clamp, which is going to be my min distance, right, that I'm passing in, take this value, so min distance, and make sure that it's in between and then two numbers. So I don't want it to be below one, and the max would be max distance, right? I don't want it to be, I don't want the minimum to be above the max. And then take whatever you get from that. So if the min distance is zero, clamp it and bring it up to one, return that, and then make sure that we reassign min distance to be one. And then now we know that if we're assigning the min distance that this will always be one. So this is just a little error checking just to be sure. So now we have our play clip 3D, and even if we give it zero or a negative number, it doesn't really matter. We can play the coin sound, we, or any sound you want, any audio clip you want. We can give it a volume, give it a position, give it a min distance, a max distance, and it should play it in our scene. So let's give that a shot. Hit play, then test it. You can see it's spawning and it's pretty faint right here. But if we move our camera closer, 
It should get louder. Alright, so let's move the camera. You see how it gets louder based off of distance? So you can control it if you want. And again, if you wanted to do other things to it, because we're returning this, you could say something like uh, audio source, audio source is equal to, and then you could you know, do other things to it if you want, like you could set the pitch as equal to, equal to 0.5, you know, right? Like it's nice that we're returning this just so that we have more options to do other things to the audio source if we want to. So again, the danger of spawning these things in the scene is it's really convenient and nice, but you, you really want to set this up through an object pooling system if you want this to be optimized. But this is really nice for prototyping and uh, getting some quick audio feedback inside of your games while you're still building your mechanics for a placeholder. And then you can build a more complex object pooling system later if you want to. So uh, just to summarize, we created this new Play Clip 3D in our audio helper just because the original Unity 3D Play Clip at point is very limited. We don't get any ability to grab a hold of that audio source that we're creating and uh, we can't really do much to it. So we do want to create our own and we can call it from anywhere we want because it's a static function. So you can take your audio helper script now and you can bring this into your other projects and just really easily play sounds however you want, which is a pretty, pretty handy tool to have.